Many people love watching shows or movies set in some sort of post-apocalyptic universe and consider the lifestyles to be rather glamorous. However, the truth is that reality in a post-apocalyptic universe would certainly not be the fun and games free-for-all that so many people imagine it to be. The most fun parts of life you see in the post-apocalyptic movies would either be non-existent or just the happiest moments of what is otherwise a long, hard slog through life. In today's video, we want to go over the ways that life after the apocalypse might not be as fun as these TV shows lead you to believe. Number 10. Horses would almost certainly be eaten, not used as mounts. In a lot of post-apocalyptic media, you see people using horses as mounts, but this is really just all kinds of silly. While it makes sense in some sort of medieval fantasy universe, those who are already used to technology and are starving in terms of food, they're unlikely to be using a horse, something that requires so much food to keep alive, as a mount when they could simply eat it instead. Now, back in the day, they used horses as mounts because they needed something to use, and it didn't have to be the best meat. But nowadays, we have things like bicycles. And when it comes to multi-gear bikes, we now have bikes that with comparatively little effort could potentially take someone hundreds of miles. And in terms of the caloric cost in a society struggling to find food, it just wouldn't be logical for horses to be anything other than meat. Bikes and other similar transports would quickly become the norm as fuel and food both became scarce. Number 9. Travel would become a rarity only done as truly needed. Now, while we would have mountain bikes for long travel and they are relatively sturdy, they offer very little in terms of protection from the elements. And the truth is that, in general, unless trying to migrate, like in the old days for better lands, there would be little reason at all to do any real travel. If people were living in an area where they had a decent amount of resources between them, it would be extremely risky to move. And even in an area with few resources, if there was just enough to survive, it would be really hard to save up and go on a long journey, especially if you aren't sure that nearby areas were in much better shape. Travel would likely be cut to people only going a few miles in each direction. It would also become very acquainted with our closest neighbors and probably come to rely on each other. Number 8. Shampoo, conditioner, and other products would probably not be available. In post-apocalyptic media, you see beautiful people who have often been out in the woods for weeks, months, or even longer. They do not have access to a beauty supply store, a beauty parlor, or even a Walgreens, but they manage to look perfectly made up, just like they came out of a makeup studio in Hollywood. It's a shocker. And while it would likely be harder for us to connect with the main characters if they look grunged up and disgusting, the fact of the matter is that they probably kinda would. You can only wash your clothes so well in a stream without soap, and in most post-apocalyptic situations, getting yourself and your clothes fully cleaned, if you are lucky, is about as far as you are going to get. Focusing on cosmetics is going to come later in the more prosperous villages after a lot of people settle down, and even then it's not likely to reach the level it once did anytime soon, if ever. Furthermore, no matter how advanced a village, those who spend most of their time out in the woods are simply not going to look like Hollywood supermodels. Number 7. The remaining anti-vaxxers would have potential to do incredible damage. Today, anti-vaxxers are already doing serious damage, bringing diseases like measles roaring back in developed countries like the United States. However, in a society where there was much less regulation and much less vaccine availability, it would be much easier for anti-vaxxers to poison the well or get away with mixing their children with others when they have infectious diseases. In fact, this was part of the reason disease used to spread so quickly. Before organizations like the CDC, your constant mass communication and increased literacy not only were things like like vaccinations rare, but medical ignorance in general was a really big problem. Now, many today are learning medical ignorance by believing the wrong information that they read online, and even some in the medical field are being infected. In a scenario where a lot of humans got cut off from each other and a lot of laws broke down, many less people would have vaccines available, and a lot of others would feel less pressure to get their kids vaccinated or potentially fall to scientific ignorance. The results could be dire and wipe out a huge amount of the population that has already lost infrastructure, communication, and knowledge due to other apocalyptic reasons. Number 6. Pollution would be a greater problem than perhaps ever before. Right now, pollution and climate change are a big problem, but in the event of some kind of disaster, whether through climate change or something else, it could end up, at least on a local scale, as an even bigger immediate problem for 
the average community of survivors. Regulation would mostly be up to local communities, and some would be better than others, but nearby communities could pollute in their own way that might affect their neighbors, and aside from war, it could be very hard to get them to cooperate. On top of that, most people would probably be more worried about survival at all costs at first, so likely a lot of sacrifices in terms of pollution would be made. Now, it could be argued that going back in time, people would have had a similar problem in non-industrialized societies without proper states and laws governing the dumping of waste and other such things, but it could be an even bigger problem because in most post-apocalyptic societies, people would not have more than a patchwork of waste dumping cooperation with their nearby neighbors, but they would also have a situation where many people had a knowledge of industry that those in the past simply didn't have. So many people would be piecing together industrial equipment, utilizing dangerous chemicals, and using whatever they could to get by with far less environmental safety or knowledge than we have now. In short, apart from the massive scale of industry we have now, the problem on a local scale could end up far worse. Number 5. We would have to spend time talking to people who don't agree with us. On the internet, we've gotten used to the high of always finding people who agree with us and always finding people who share our hobbies. However, in a post-apocalyptic society, we would have to make do with people who are local to us, and this would make it much harder to find that easy affirmation. On the whole, you're going to have a lot more trouble finding people who simply pat you on the back for every opinion that you have. And you're also going to find it a lot harder to find those who share your more esoteric hobbies. Online, you can always find at least a few oddballs who share your weirdest quirks and interests, but if society and all that mass communication break down, then you are once again going to find yourself being that weird geeky person. In truth, there are many geeky interests that are still kind of niche, but people feel cool about it because you can always find a few people to talk about it online with. In a post-apocalyptic society, all of that is going to go away. Number 4. A minor injury or other bruise could easily lead to your death. One of the first things that would go away is proper access to medical care and even often basic medical supplies. This makes a very difficult situation for those glamorous survivors that you see in a lot of movies, who often look very rugged and scuffed up like they've been through the ringer. The sad fact is that without proper medical care that most survivors in a lot of post-apocalyptic movies and TV shows don't have, those bruised and scuffed up people will probably soon develop a blood infection from their cuts and bruises and then die a very miserable and easily avoidable death. As for anything much worse than that, you better hope you are lucky and only end up crippled for life in some form or another, instead of simply succumbing to your injuries. Those who are crippled would also likely struggle to fit into a society at all, and in harsher groups with less resources, they may not end up finding a place at all. When you are trying to rebuild society, it can be difficult to justify spending too many resources on the weak. Number 3. People would start having massive amounts of children again, and they would die. In order to shore up human numbers and also to ensure that at least a few survive, people would likely start having massive amounts of children again like they used to. Unfortunately, this would also lead us back to a time period when children were used greatly for labor from a young age and were often considered more of a resource than anything else. After all, if times are tough and food is hard to come by, then anyone who eats food had better be helping produce it as well in some way. This means children would be more focused on work from a young age than getting an education, and parents could expect, with less health care, that most of their children would not survive to adulthood and may be afraid to get too attached to them in the first place. This means children would grow up not feeling as much affection and attachment to their parents, but this may be well and good enough as their parents probably wouldn't live very long lives either. Now, this doesn't mean parent and child relationships would be loveless, but things would definitely be much grimmer and more focused on work from a very young age. Number 2. Raids would be common and life would be violent and unpleasant. In a post-apocalyptic society, raids would be something people would have to regularly worry about. Whether from individuals, mini-armies from entire small cities, or just raiding bands, any community or anyone who puts down roots would have to constantly be worried about what kind of people might simply be trying to run up and take what they have. You would have to constantly be on alert, and with all the modern weapons still around, you can almost never be too prepared for what your enemies might use in order to take everything that you have or even obliterate you from the face of the earth. Bigger communities with their own militias would probably fare better, but small farms or families isolated from others would almost be sitting ducks and probably constantly find themselves under attack. Unless you are willing to be a part of a big cooperative with a lot of protection, the more attention you attract with your nice buildings and beautiful lands, the more likely it is that someone's just going to straight up steal it from you. Number 1. It may sound fun to individuals, but they would have it the very worst of all. 
Many young men like the idea of a future where we still have a lot of our knowledge, but society has busted down and things are now going south. It's sort of a feeling of independence, like they get a chance to live out all of their wildest power fantasies, and with no rules to stop them, that's just a cherry on top of the sundae. However, they would find a society full of a patchwork of new rules and communities, where they would either follow those rules while around each community, or find themselves quickly unwelcome. And if they tried to raid and impose their will on others, they would often find themselves against fierce resistance and hunted down. If they ever needed medical or other help, most survivors would find themselves needing assistance and would either need to break down and be part of a society for a bit or would already be an enemy of society and find that no one really wants to help them. The bigger, more organized societies would prosper and those that were alone, except for a rare few survival experts who don't mind staying away from others and living entirely as hermits, would not live very long and would likely have an unpleasant existence in the new post-apocalyptic world. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. And don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out my other channel called Today I Found Out. I'm linking to that below. And as always, thank you for watching.